Hello, it's so good to be with you again. Let's just jump into Revelation chapter 10, starting to read in verse 8. It says, Then the voice which I heard from heaven I heard again speaking with me and saying, Go, take the scroll which is open in the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the land. And I went to the angel, telling him to give me the little scroll. And he said to me, Take it and eat it. It will make your stomach bitter, but in your mouth it will be as sweet as honey. I took the little scroll from the angel's hand and ate it, and in my mouth it was sweet as honey. And when I had eaten it, my stomach was made bitter. And they said to me, You must prophesy again concerning many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. So we don't get a lot of information on what this little scroll is, and I didn't mention it much on it in the service on Sunday, but I want to talk a little bit today about how this is a, a scroll that John was told to internalize, you know, to eat something. The word for meditation is actually, it means to chew the, chew the cud. It means to ingest it, to take it in, to grab every nutrient that you can out of it. And John is being told here that he is uh, called to be a prophet concerning many people's nations, languages, and kings. So John is actually receiving a very hard word. And it's described in this way, in the eating of this little scroll, in the taking in of the message that's been given to him, it was actually sweet in his mouth. It tasted like honey. Oh, this is, this is really good. I love studying this. And then he ingests it, and then it becomes bitter in his stomach. It, it, it makes him feel queasy, and it makes him um, actually nauseated. And as we're thinking about that passage, I can't help but think about the, the effect of the prophetic word upon those who receive it and those who take it in. I, I, I'll tell you, you know, you feel a certain level of conflict as a pastor when we, you're sharing this word, knowing that there are a lot of people that come to the church and, you know, they, they need words that lift them up and words that encourage them. Yet at the same time, I have an overriding, yes, those are important, but I have an overriding sense of responsibility, of preparedness and understanding of, of what's coming someday for the believer and, and preparation for the coming of Christ, that it could be immediately um, uh, the breaking of the skies and Christ coming forth and we're caught up like a lightning bolt. And then also understanding that in the preparation of our children to understand, hey, we live in a world in which there's an adversary and who comes against every bit of our faith in Christ. And as I think about the studying of the book of Revelation, I know that for a lot of us it can become like, hey, this is really awesome, this is really sweet, and yet at the same time you can feel that sense of, of a bitterness that comes inside your soul, and you're just saying, Lord God, this is me, making me feel uncomfortable. And I want you to know that the, the writer of this book, the Apostle John, felt the exact same thing. I, I think about the fact that for me, as being a believer raised in a pastor's home, I was raised in this message and understanding of the coming of Christ. And it's this bittersweet thing. Oh man, it's, it's just so exciting that, you know, the, the thoughts of the presence of the Lord and being with him and riding on the white horses and coming with him. And yet at the very same time, we realize that as you're watching unfolding events, you can say, Lord, I love the idea of the second coming of Christ, but I wish it wasn't me that had to, to walk through a time of trouble or whatever it might be. And it's this bittersweet experience. And the Lord just gives us this little glimpse. He doesn't fully explain it, but wants us to know the bittersweetness of experiencing um, the study of the book of Revelation and that the Lord wants to keep, us, keep it all in perspective. Let's not receive the book of Revelation and allow it to overwhelm. Don't allow it to become desperate. Don't allow it to become um, where you just say, oh, let's throw up our hands and, and just say, well, the world's going to go to Hades in a handbasket and we might as well give up hope. No, the Lord is letting us know, hey, this is bittersweet, but you occupy until I come. We don't know the coming of Christ. It could be right now. I believe it's very soon. But at the same time, we have to understand that we, we must Eat the scroll, experience the bittersweet of it, but in the meantime, rise up, be strong, walk in faith, and plan for the future. You know, strategize that, 
hey, this could be a season of trouble, but God is going to see us through. The book of Revelation teaches us God's going to see us during the worst time of trouble. But even no matter what day you and I are living in right now, God's going to see us through. So you be strong in faith and hope, knowing that God is a God of provision. God is a God of healing. God is a, a loving God who watches over and cares for his people. And we put our faith and trust in the Lord at all times, even in the sometimes bittersweetness of life.